Our next presenter hails from Victoria. He was educated at Michael House High School. In fact, he was deputy head boy in 1997. He studied there after at Stellenbosch University, finished with a BCom honors. He officially joined the family business McCormick Property Development in 2002. He formed the business development department of that uh, company in 2008 and has been head of deal making and new developments ever since, having been responsible for the development of 26 developments totaling over 500,000 square meters gross letting area to date. And he was subsequently appointed managing director of uh, MPD in 2011. And at 33, he was elected the youngest ever director of the South African Council of Shopping Centers and received the organ rule Young Achiever Award for his contribution to the shopping center industry in 2016. In 2018, he was appointed as the CEO of Exemplar Retail Limited on its listing on the main board of the JSE. He's an avid naturalist and conservationist. He's passionate about community upliftment and the positive impact that its business can have on underprivileged and marginalized communities. Um, his name is Jason McCormick. He's the CEO of Exemplar Retail. So welcome to you, Jason. Thank you for joining us today. We look forward to your insights. It's over to you. Uh, uh, well, hi, everyone. Um, as you've heard, my name is Jason McCormick. I'm the CEO of Exemplar, uh, Exemplar Retail. We've been listed. Uh, yeah, we chose it. We chose the timing perfectly. We chose possibly the worst time for, for REITs in the history of the JSC, uh, certainly in the history of REITs, um, to list in, in 2018. Uh, so it's been quite a, it's been quite a, quite a quite a ride to date. Um, being part of Exemplar, we we just released our uh, interim results on Friday, um, and we are opening our biggest ever shopping centre that we've ever developed as McCormick property in 70, 17 days time in in Tembisa. Um, so yeah, it's it's been it's been quite a time. Uh, nice to be sharing some insights with you and the ability to actually speak a little bit more freely, not being any close periods um, as we stand. Um, yeah, we the, the, a little bit uh, brief introduction on Exemplar. It was born out of McCormick Property. It was founded by my dad, John McCormick, in 1983. Um, really, is the first company to focus specifically on providing services, retail services, uh, to the the underserviced homeland areas. Uh, in the dark days of apartheid, 1983, um, we've smaller to be so it will be our 68th development. Yeah, so yeah, the vast majority of us, uh, all our developments have been um, the provision of retail in the um, in the areas, uh, you know, the, the homelands and the the old homelands, so the rural areas and and the townships. Um, and and as you've heard, you know, we've. I've seen firsthand how our developments really do impact the, the lives and the future of the areas in which they, which they operate. And it is really a, a big passion of mine is, is seeing how we can leverage, we leverage our, our portfolio and our properties to, to kind of create a better life um, within, within the communities in which we operate. Um, as I said, the, uh, I've been privileged to, you know, I've worked with my dad in the, in the company for almost 20 years. Um, but I've had the privilege of working him alongside him my entire life. Uh, if, if I was to look at a kind of a sem seminal moment in my life, the top right picture you see there is uh, 1987, the opening of Diani Plaza um, in the old Gazankulu. <clears throat> and it was there that I first really was involved in, in the fanfare around the shopping center opening and seeing the, the ululation and, and the, 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 really the jubilation that, that, that accompanied it, I realized back then it was something that I wanted to do. And um, so I've kind of studied uh, to, to be in the job that I'm in currently my entire life. And it's, it's, been, it's been a hell of a, a hell of a ride, to be honest, because from the early days when this is Jane Furs Plaza, when I'm still in the portfolio of one of our oldest developments, about 25, 26 years old, um, really utilitarian retail shopping centers, taxi rank, you know, interestingly, this was the first bank um, to go into a, a fully serv full service bank. It was a standard bank that my dad did, um, spit it out fully for a standard bank and charged them one round a year. Um, because back in the days, the banks didn't really want to come out to these areas. Um, and this was a, a big, a massive breakthrough for us because instead of having to travel an hour and a half to get to Polokwani to do banking, the community suddenly could bank uh, where they lived. Um, and as I said, it was, was really a watershed moment um, 
as, as we've developed um, and as, as aspirations um, and income levels have changed, uh, you know, this is Quaka Plaza, one of our one of our other older shopping centers, also about 25, 26 years old. Um, the, the needs, wants, desires of our of our well, like our market, the, the you know the, the rural and the township market has changed. Um, and as you can see, this is the expansion we expansion and redevelopment we did to Quaka. So from a very utilitarian shopping center to fully fledged enclosed shopping malls. Um, but not all of our. This is just a, it's another picture of. It. Not all of our shopping centres um, are are fully enclosed. Um, but even the open ones, this is Catale Square, and uh, we opened last year. And this thing has been trading out its boots about nine thousand square metres near kind of Stettlers is, is the closest, but a deep, deep rural area just south of Stiebusra. Um But as as you can see in the top left, um, this underlines one of our big. Uh, one of the big slants we're taking in terms of making our shopping centers relevant into this this online future. The one thing that we believe that that online can't uh, can never replace when it comes to shopping centers is the experience. Um, and these we always aim to make our shopping centers the center of community, uh, the place to meet and greet, and and you know the old the village square, the town squares of old. Um, and so there was the water park, was our first water park. We did the splash pad that we did in Kitali. It's been a massive hit, given that this area is dry, dusty, and, and doesn't have the luxury of, of free flowing water anywhere in it. Um, it's been a, a bit of an epiphany and something that's worked really well. Just running you through some of our, our more modern developments, which I'll then speak, speak to. This is um, Alex Small, another uh, a further watershed moment for us um, in terms of. This, Iconic Designs was our first semi-double level shopping centre um, in, in London Road in Alexandra. Um, huge community involvement. We've got a living museum in there. Um, Paula, Paula Mall, quite close to Quachen in the, in the Kondabele uh, area, the old Kondabele, uh, about 28,000 squares. Um, and this, another development that's gone from strength to strength to strength of ours. We've been fairly fortunate in, in, in the last couple of developments that we've done. Okay, this, <laughs> Interestingly, this, this this one of the Edgars is that we've 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 closed. We only had two Edgars in the portfolio. This and in Kozani Crossing. Um, this one we we chose to close. Uh, it was trading very poorly. Um, and in response to COVID, what we have done, um, you know, we've always had a lot of essential services, so a, a, a far higher proportion of groceries, banks, um, service related, essential service related stuff, and healthcare within our malls. Um, we've put in a boxer as a third anchor to augment the, the grocery offering. We've got a, therefore four supermarkets if you include the Roots, ShopRite, um, Spa, and, and now the boxer that's replaced the Sedgas. Um, Matrakung, another one that's, that's continued to trade from strength to strength. And, and, um, yeah, just to, to counter Irwin's doom and gloom, um, in terms of the malls and low income, uh, locations will remain under pressure. Of course they will. Specifically, if um, yeah, if uh, public service wages are to be slashed, um, and anything ever happens to the social grants, but this one, so we did we did a we did a comparison um, for this calendar year 2020 versus uh, calendar year 2019, and just removing the months uh, for which tenants were locked down this year and last year, this mall showed a 49% increase in trading density 2020 over 2019. So certainly, you know, this, this and a couple of the overall, uh, just an interesting fact, the overall across the portfolio, um, we've got an 11% increase in turnovers, uh, 2020 versus 2019. So it's nice to count to the what is it, 10 points, whatever percent down that the sector was down. Uh, you know, so certainly um, a little bit of um, resilience uh, with, with, within our sector um, of, the, of the retail sector. Uh, Mobapani Square. Just showing a, a, again, you know, just trying to take our design to a different level. And another little water park um, feature in there that the kids come and splash in the, in the middle of the summer. Uh, a lot of fun. Um, really, just uh, sorry. This is out of this is Katali Square, the one I showed you two, two, three slides ago. Um, just again showing this is kind of like it's a an open shopping centre, but with a roof on, just to take it a little bit more into the modern era as opposed to the older, more utilitarian schemes. Uh, that we've done. And then this one, obviously, Mall of Tembisa, for those of you who don't know, we're opening it in, in uh, 17 days' time. It will be our flagship 
um, in, in my opinion, is the biggest mall we've ever built, just shy of 45,000 squares. 30% of um, the mall is groceries, healthcare, and financial services, so deemed um, essential. Um, in this, so it's a shop by Superstar, Boxer, uh, and Big Roots, Discam, Clicks, and Nine Banks, uh, if you include the smaller financial institutions. Um, yeah, and it's yeah, it's all guns blazing now. Uh, you can imagine the the stress that we're all under. You know, you take three months out of a construction uh, program uh, with the lockdown in the second half of a construction program and try and catch that up in time. You know, we've had to burn midnight oil uh, ever since we were allowed to go back on site to make sure that we've we've got it back on time. I was I was on site from four or five o'clock this morning, um, just checking a few things, and it is looking great. And certainly. We're not showing too much um, here and now. We want to leave um, most of it for, for when it opens. But certainly in terms of the design methodology, we were quite pleased in, in you know, I've been trying to get more natural light, more space into all our enclosed malls. Um, it sounds counterintuitive, um, but I hate shopping malls. Um, I hate shopping myself in shopping malls because I hate being hemmed in um, like cattle in a crush. And so, this is the first of our, our malls. Alex was, was similar, and we really tried to bathe the entire mall in as much natural light, really wide, um, really wide passages throughout. Uh, you can, you can actually, if I, if I go back one uh, on on that top on the left hand uh, slide, you can see the voids that we've got throughout uh, the mall, bringing light in from the from the upper upper areas um, throughout the entire mall, and, and about 25% inefficiency, about 75%. GLA to GBA efficiency ratio, um, and again, this is to you know we anticipate. Well, I'm guessing that we've got one and a half thousand, one and a half million shoppers a month um, will come through this mall um, from the get-go. Uh, in terms of the, in terms of our future, um, we've got Flagstaff in the Eastern Cape under construction. Um, I took a decision during COVID. Uh, as to, you know, we've got about 30 developments in, in, our, in our development pipeline that are done under the McCormick Property Development Banner. Um, we decided during COVID, we needed to focus where it would be virgin territory for, for the retailers. So we've got a strong um, pipeline coming in the Eastern Cape. So Flagstaff and Mount Frere are, are currently un, un, under construction at the moment. Um, fantastic tenant take up and just on the on, on the note uh, in Tembisa, you know, I think it's about doubt one of the, if not the best uh, leasing leasing la uh, tenant mix we've ever had, um, and a lot of that was closed post COVID. So despite all the doom and gloom, despite everything, yet our, our rental levels aren't where we otherwise would have liked to have them. I think our, our average rental there in is 136 rand a square. Um, in, in Mall of Tembisa, whereas if you look at our current flagship in Foster Riss, uh, Chris Honey Crossing, that's at about 177 rand a square. So it, it is substantially down, um, and a lot of that is as a consequence of where the economy is at, where, where retailer mindsets are at, but they're still coming. Um, and, and my hope is they'll trade well and we'll make upside in, in the years to come. This one will open next year, um, and then just some of, the, some of the stuff that's coming. Uh, Dobson, Dobson Gate and, with Putt Crop and Mamalodi Square, also with Putt Crop. Um, Capital Mall, our big one in, in Pretoria East. Which, uh, again, this is 60,000 squares we'd planned for. We're probably going to start it up to 50,000. We're always um, under, under scale our development. Um, and then our next one in Eastern Cape is in Idutra. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit more about, um, and I think we'll pick up a lot of more of this in the panel discussion down at home. We've seen a huge bounce. Um, in the in the in the turnovers um, and trading densities of our of our furniture retailers over the past couple of months, um, and whether that is just you know paying up accounts that they weren't able to pay during lockdown, or if people are actually looking to to make their homes better uh, remains to be seen. But in any event, you know we've certainly been moving so um, a lot more so the, the likes of clicks a lot more healthcare. Uh, coming into our portfolio over the last couple, the last couple of years, a lot more food, a lot more basics. Um, to because we, we realise that the, you know the next couple of years, uh, next decade possibly, two decades in a row, um, we're going to be under pressure. Uh, but you know, coming from where we where, where we came from, you know, in in the old days, 
we, we couldn't we, we couldn't buy a Mr. Price to come into our, our market when I first joined the company. Um, you know, very few people saw in much potential in in coming into our areas. So, you know, we've 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 had it tough from the get go. Yes, you know, we kind of might be in vogue now, um, because some people say oh, we're more resilient, uh, although not Irwin says we come coming under under pressure into the future. But we used to be under pressure and I suppose because we've used to being frugal, we've used to been managing everything, you know, very attentively. Um, I, I certainly, I'm not concerned from our side um, in terms of our ability to to handle this new normal. No doubt that our, um, the focus is going to continue on making our cases um, of, of shopping, cases of entertainment. Um, you know, in, in the areas that we are, there's very little to do. There, you know, there were a couple of parks and a couple of dusty soccer fields. So we're going to continue refining our entertainment elements, and you'll see that uh, evolve each new development that, that that comes. But yeah, we're just keeping it simple. Um, and and certainly, we understand that the online is coming, um, and we I suppose have the benefit of the foresight in that we can watch what's happening globally um, as as a South African industry, and then also from us in our niche, we can watch what's happening in the in the more urbanised areas and, and take the new technologies and how that's affecting. Um, retail in general, um, and in fact, those learnings uh, give us a bit, of, bit, bit extra breathing space that we can adapt. It's, it is a nice thing being a, a, a small company, um, very flat, um, very flat structure. Is that we're able to to maneuver very quickly, able to pivot very quickly, and so certainly, you know, any any changes that are required, we're able to to turn on a ticky and and institute them very quickly. So, you know, in terms of going into this new normal, into, into the future, we're still very excited. Um, we, we've, you know, spent the better part of 12, 15 years building the pipeline that we've got in areas that we've known to be under service um, and we'll continue to roll out um, our new, new style, new breed of, of, of shopping centre, um, entertainment centre, place of gathering um, as, as, as and when we, we take it forward. I think that's the end of my time. Um, certainly, thanks for, for your attention. It's the first time I've done one of these. Thank you, Neil. Well, well Jason, thank you. It's, uh, I think your presentation was quite enlightening. Our next keynote presenter emigrated to South Africa uh, in 1995. He initially worked as a commercial property broker for McCready Freelander in Cape Town. He was one of the founding members of a food import business called Rialto Foods in April 1998. He was instrumental in growing this business into Italian food importer of choice for Woolworths, and he established his own property development company in 2006. And he built up a substantial portfolio of modern logistics assets for his own account over the following eight years, and this became an important component of the Equitas Property Fund on listing. Uh, his development expertise and previous experience in the UK are key success factors for Equitas. I mean, he has a BSc Honours Degree in Mathematics and Management from King's College in London. His name is Andrea Taverna Turison, and he is the Chief Executive Officer and Executive Director at Equitas Property Fund since 2014. Welcome, Andrea. We look forward to your insights. And uh, thank you. Thank you, thank wow. you for joining us. Uh, yeah, thanks. Thanks for 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 hosting us and uh, giving us the opportunity um, to to talk about our world. Um, you Wonderful. Know, and obviously, it's great to follow Jason. You know, who, who's got a, an amazing success story, um, which which I believe has got um, massive space for for growth and and to actually complement what what we do in in a lot of ways. You know, there's wonderful. There's quite a bit of doomsday stuff out there that what we do is going to kill retail I don't, I'm as much as <laughs> I'd love to sell my own book I don't believe it I do believe that retail will always have its place in in a society um, wonderful so it's over to you Andrea carry on and just just a bit of context on Equitas we listed as a as a REIT in 2014 and um, really to to focus on this logistics world um, and the phenomenon that was coming through as a consequence of, of supply chain optimization, but also coupled with that, um, you know, there was uh, the beginning of e-commerce, if you like. Um, we, we, we've sort of been playing in this field since about 2006 in my personal capacity and, and 
and and the theme just basically started getting stronger and stronger. Um, In 2016, uh, as Equitus, we we went into the UK market um, and we've grown the portfolio. At the moment, um, we we basically about 60% in South Africa, 40% in in the UK, plus minus. Uh, We're hoping to take transfer of a few of the ShopRite DCs in, in the coming days hopefully, and um, we're waiting for the deeds offices to process things. Uh, but when, when the ShopRite properties come onto our balance sheet, uh, we'll, we'll probably go to 70-30 again uh, in favour of South Africa. Um, whilst I know today is um, predominantly being talking about the South African industrial market, I just want to bring some global themes into the discussion and then, and then basically put sort of profile them into into what's happening in South Africa. So what's happening on a global scale, I think, will eventually happen in South Africa. We're probably not quite there. And and the markers that are driving process in in SA are slightly different to what's happening worldwide. And uh, and effectively, I think what's what's actually happened is as a consequence of COVID, uh, there were were a lot of of things that were happening in our world that uh, have consequentially been sort of sped out. um, and, and if we if we can, I mean, the, the, the global world that we, we live in, obviously, with supply chain and with just-in-time um, efficiency supply chains, where everything was driven basically to the nth degree to try and keep costs as low as possible and to keep inventory levels as low as possible. Now, the consequence of the U.S.-China trade wars and, and to a certain extent, maybe even more so COVID, the consequence of, of, of those elements... Um, will will invariably um, result in these supply chains having been put under massive stress uh, and the consequence of this stress um, has put on massive massive um, pressure on 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 finished product consequence of that is what we're seeing is we're noticing basically especially on on the global level we what we're seeing is people basically looking to increase um, their, their inventory levels um, to 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 basically become more resilient to these shocks, uh, and and over and above that, there's also a massive focus on diversifying the supply chain. So the the, the complete re- reliance on China for raw product to come into a into a supply chain is sort of being diversified and trying to bring different countries so that that if if something does sort of happen, these things are are are, are mitigated to a certain extent. Um, from, from a retail point of view, um, what we've seen, obviously, is that logistics has always been critical to retail. I mean, you know, central distribution, you know, we can see the success of, of the ShopRite story within the context of South Africa. And they were probably the first guys to come on with central distribution probably in the 90s. Um, and they've, they've developed that to a great extent. And, and really, that central distribution has allowed them to, to have a, an availability of product on shelf uh, well into the 90s in terms of percentage. And, 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 and when it comes to retail, um, that, that is very critical to making sure that you, you, you get um, market share. Um, so uh, over and above that, the, um, the, the, the COVID pandemic has basically effectively given us what we believe to be a, a five-year head start. Um, and, and that really is fueling um, a, a demand driver on product um, in most most nations. Coupled with that, the consequence of that is also what we're seeing is um, the pressure on retail, especially in, in in mature economies, has been almost has been devastating for some some of the organisations, uh, with a lot of um, money basically now coming into our sector, and the yield compression in terms of valuations um, in in online in, in in logistics properties is is very substantial. So, if, if we if we look at this size, I mean, obviously we've spoken briefly about the e-commerce adaptation, and, and you can see that uh, the the if we use the UK as an example, I mean, COVID basically took the online pen, penetration in terms of retail sales basically up to about thirty three percent. Now, if we if we were to compare that South Africa, South Africa probably started pre COVID um, at about two percent. Uh, maybe a little less than two percent, uh, and and the reality of it is that we probably added a whole percentage point to that. So um, most of the big retailers have had double digit, and we'll talk to that a little bit later on in the in the in the presentation. If you look at other mature economies, 
can see countries like Spain and France uh, are still quite far behind, uh, but, but we, we, we see that, that, that the level of growth that's going to be coming through as a consequence of COVID is pretty, pretty substantial. Um, and again, what we're seeing is, is uh, a risk aversion on the manufacturing side and what we're going to be seeing, we believe, is, is significant onshoring of manufacturing. Um, and that, that's going to uh, enhance the level of inventories that are needed to make sure that that manufacturing can, can carry on um, efficiently. Um, um, again, I've sort of briefly mentioned it in terms of the valuation and, the, and, the, and the, the level of returns. And you can see the industrial sector has outperformed globally. I think within the context of South Africa, uh, if we were to compare sort of our results being the only specialist sort of REIT that looks at this particular sector, I think we would, we would fare no differently in this graph. Um, and, and we obviously are the beneficiaries of uh, your compression, but also demand drivers. And, and we've been so probably the least affected industry when it comes to um, the, the COVID environment, the resilience of even equities portfolio. I mean, we've, we've collected sort of 99.1% of our rent. Um, you know, we've, we've had very few of our tenants that were completely shut down. Uh, we, 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 within the context of what we do, you know, I suppose the two industries that were probably shut down in our, in our world were, would have been sort of industries related to probably liquor for a period and, and obviously tobacco. Um, so our exposure to those two industries is very, very minimal. Um, but, but, you know, those, those two industries, are, apart from those two industries, most of the other sort of supply chains have sort of been ongoing and, 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 and running. Um, um, effectively, uh, this really talks to really what's happened. So what, what we've seen is a lot of organizations have, have been found sort of wanting and, and when the demand drivers came through earlier in the year, um, you know, you, the, the ability to, to match and to meet the demand drivers was just not there. The platforms weren't big enough to sustain that. Um, the consequence of that, and, and, you know, we're looking at the UK market, and, and uh, if we look at the UK market, the, the, the level of take-up of space, effectively, after three quarters, we've basically broken the all-time record in terms of take-up of space in the UK. And, and, and the reason for that is that, a lot of guys are basically taking temporary space um, on, on sort of two to three year leases with a view to basically looking to fulfill uh, brand new facilities across, across the country so that they can meet these massive record e-commerce demands that are coming through. And, and again, we'll talk to, to that in the context of, of local in, in, in just a bit. Um, and really the, the interesting thing here is that a lot of secondary space has been taken out of the market. We, we're at all-time lows in terms of uh, vacancies, uh, both in the UK, in the Dutch market, in the German markets. So these markets are really seeing massive demand drivers. Um, and and what, we, what we foresee and what we forecast with the interactions that we're currently having through our Newlands joint venture in the UK, where we are looking to develop significant um, warehousing facilities uh, on a pre-let basis uh, with occupiers and we're seeing the demand drivers um, that are coming through and the demands that we are being being asked of us um, of, are literally at an all-time high. So, so we're very encouraged by that. We're very encouraged about how uh, the, 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 the level of uptake whilst it came off when, when sort of the world opened up a little bit through the summer months in Europe um, it's still significantly higher than where it was pre-COVID. Um, they're obviously in, in the UK and, and Germany and France. With the second wave, these guys are now going into another lockdown. And, and obviously, from an e-commerce perspective, this bodes extremely well. I mean, you know, we, we, we know that, I mean, we have two facilities in the UK that are let to DPD that are, you know, probably the largest last mile delivery platform in the UK, I think. They control something like 40% of market share in the UK. And, and what we're seeing in the facilities that we own and they rent from us, that they're basically running at substantially above uh, the design capability of those buildings at the moment because just the demand drivers are so, so high. Um, so if, so what, 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 we, uh, what we have is 
as you'll see, the human labor item picking, which is basically how a lot of South African e-commerce is currently being picked. Um, and the reality of it is, is the future is on the other side, which is obviously automated for fulfillment centers. Now we have obviously different levels of automation. We have from a JD group in, in, in China that basically is opening in Shanghai, their first fully automated, so zero people in the facility can basically deliver 120,000 orders a day um, coming out of, out of that facility. Um, so to a, a, a partial automation, the likes of Ocado have got with Marks and Spence in the UK, and I mean, we, we've partially got a, an automated facility in Johannesburg, which is led to a, a company called DSP Pharma, where effectively they can process about 30,000 orders a day. But there, there are basically about 110 people that would work in that facility. But what we're seeing is that we're seeing this migration to automation, uh, the level of sophistication required and the volumes of orders that are being processed at the moment. Uh, even in, 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 in South Africa, those volumes are growing at substantial breakneck breakneck speed um, if we can basically carry on um, and then you know let, let's contextualize this within 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 a South African um, context uh, we can go to local themes now and and some of the news that's obviously come through which is extremely encouraging from the world that we live in is obviously I mean some of the top bigger retailers within within the South African space you can see um, the discams of this world, their online sales growth growing at 344%. Obviously, this is off a very, very low base. Um, Mr. Price at 75%, uh, slightly bigger base than discams would be. Woolies, you know, they're, they're online growing at 41%. Um, and, and, and then, you know, Mass Mart with across their, across their brands, you know, you've got builders at 100%, macro at, at um, sorry, game at 100, builders at 160, and macro at 84% growth. Again, um, some of these off, off, off fairly low bases. I mean, as, as some of you may have experienced within a South African context, I think ShopRite are, are the guys with their 60-minute program have, have really captured the bull by, 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 the, by the horns and are really driving that process. Um, the, one, the one thing within South Africa is that, is that as a consequence of, of the, low, um, the low percentage of total sales that still on, online necessitates, I don't think decision-making retail real estate decision making has not been driven by e-commerce yet whereas what you see in the rest of the world e-commerce is driving that decision making um, in south africa i think the context of it is is the decision making is really being driven predominantly um, by supply chain optimization we've seen that in, in 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 the facilities that we're currently developing where multiple warehouses have been brought under one roof um, where, where everything can be controlled centrally and there's also um, an optimization of, 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 of staff, an optimization of security, an optimization of, of keeping everything under one roof, uh, which is where the world seems to be going. Um, within the e-commerce platform, I mean, TFG are probably, of all of them, I'd say at this stage, probably have got the highest percentage of, of, of online sales, especially in their, in their clothing divisions. Um, and, and obviously, they're predicting um, significant growth to 2025 of 10% of all their sales uh, being online. Uh, what we've seen, and, and we've seen this also in the UK, is that um, is that these predictions tend to be underestimated often, and these things tend to sort of happen a little bit quicker than anticipated. I think the the, the results of, of COVID, um, you know, online shopping was was restricted in the first five weeks by the government in South Africa for, for, for some reason. Um, we're not quite sure why that was, but, but it was restricted. So the full effect of how COVID has, has reacted, um, has, has, in, has, has benefited um, the, the logistics sector, uh, wasn't probably felt in that first period. Um, so that, we haven't seen the full benefit of everything coming through. But, but notwithstanding that, we, we, we certainly have seen a significant amount of benefit. Um, can go to the next slide. I mean, what, what we, we're seeing is the, is the level of investment in this and, and the, PEP, the PEP group through their JD, uh, the JD group is launching the one-stop shop called Every Shop. Um, and, and they're really looking to take on Take A Lot. I think Take A Lot have been a, a really good example um, of, of how things have improved 
from very humble beginnings, they, they've sort of they've grown nicely and they, they continue to take quite a bit of market share. And, you know, we often get asked the question, so are Amazon coming to South Africa? As, as far as we know, uh, Amazon are not coming to South Africa in any, any time or any time soon. Um, well, they obviously are present here at the moment with their data centers and the name obviously comes up regularly, but, but on, on the shopping side, they're not coming here. And, and, and obviously the JD Group have various brands currently in their stable and they're looking to basically offer a, a really a, a very strong white goods proposition um, and, and, and take on take a lot in a, in a big way. I mean, in terms of, of MassMart, as we know, you know, they sent a CEO from the Walmart relationship resulted in a, in a, in a CEO coming out to South Africa last year. And, and I think that their commitment to, to the e-commerce platform has resulted in, in the recent appointment of, of another sort of uh, long-time Walmart appointee uh, coming through who has effectively been an integral part of the senior management team of the last mile delivery stuff in the US. And he's come in to basically really drive a, a mass mark e-commerce platform in, in SA. Um, what we can say is, is if we couple all of this, I mean, in, within the context of what we do, we believe there's probably 250 to, to sort of 300 buildings in SA that really meet modern sort of logistics um, standards. Uh, we, we, we're seeing some substantial builds come through uh, You'll have noticed that within within the Cape Town area, I mean, you know, Shoprite invested a significant amount of money in the last two three years in their new DC in Silmore, which obviously is coming into the joint venture that Equitas currently has with them. Over and above that, within Cape Town, you know, uh, Mass might have built a, a fifty thousand square meter plus, or they're in the process of finalising that at the moment on the R three hundred. Um, DSV are also in the process of building a fifty thousand square meter plus um, facility up the, at the airport. Uh, over and above that, DSV are building uh, a campus in Johannesburg on the R21, um, which is, is, if you add up the, the components, there's a cross-dock facility, there's a, there's a single-phase facility, and there's an office component, adds up to about 160,000 square meters of space. So they're really creating this central campus um, and, and offering basically both the last mile delivery platform, but they're also offering a, a warehousing and an all-encompassing um, 3PL solution for for, um, for, for big organizations. Um, DHL's um, strategy within, within South Africa has been very much driven by a building to meet contracts and, and, and they, they, they try and, and house multiple contracts in a building, but, but they will manage more than one building and, 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 and try and consolidate sort of contracts into those buildings as they come up. Very different to the campus style that DSV have decided to go with. Um, over and above that, D.B. Schenker built probably about five, six years ago, a very large facility in Johannesburg to, to facilitate the campus style that DSV have, have approached. Uh, and these are all household names in, in the world that we live in um, that, that may not be household names in, in the general public. Um, over and above that, what we've seen is we've seen the growth of the, the last mile um, sort of parcel delivery companies and 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 sort of very young and hungry and nimble companies such as the courier guy are doing a lot of take a lot sort of last mile delivery you've got companies like parcel ninja that are coming through the system and growing substantially um uh, and, and 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 obviously they, they will be competing against the the dsv's last mile and and and, and dhl express and and and, and the like so so it, it's it's great for, for 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 the world that we live in uh, we, we don't think that, that, again, real estate decisions in South Africa will be made um, on the basis of e-commerce just yet. We're probably, I'd say, three to five years away from those, those decisions being driven by, by, by that. And, and I think the, the, the grocery retailers will be the first that will be pushed there. And in that, I think ShopRite will probably, like in all these things, probably be the, 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 the leading exponent of it. But I, I would be surprised if Pick and Pay and Woolies and, and, and Spa don't follow hot on the heels. Uh, I think the clothing retailers will, will probably uh, take a bit longer and will look to, 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 to use their, their, um, their, their retail uh, outlets as, as they're picking platforms in the short term. But, but in time, uh, the volumes will, will necessitate them taking a, 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 a bigger look at, at, at those things. Um, if um, if we can go to the next slide, 
Um, so I've, I've probably sp probably spoken a lot to this slide already. Um, and and um, what what we're seeing is we've just broken it up in terms of um, where where everything's at. Obviously, the, the transportation and logistics still makes up a massive component um, of, of Equidus's exposure um, within within um, the, the South African market. Um, and but then but then obviously when when it's broken down into into other chains, I mean the FMCG um, retailers and wholesalers, obviously uh, that, that's probably been the, the most resilient part of of, of the portfolio. Um, healthcare and 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 also very very resilient. Uh, the clothing, the clothing retailers obviously took a bit of strain in the five-week lockdown, uh, and obviously, as I as I mentioned earlier, um, the liquor distributors uh, they really took a bit of strain um, during the process. Um, if we can go to the next one, basically, in concluding, um, you know, where 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 do we see uh, um, the the risk to the industrial property uh, market? So the first one, obviously, is is the lackluster GDP. Uh, we don't see um, prospective tenants basically um, r racing um, to the blocks to to look to to bring new product online to to meet ever ever more demanding consumers, but also to bring in efficiencies. Uh, we we've we've been uh, I suppose uh, victim is probably the wrong word, but we've we've seen several RFPs that we were involved in towards the back end of last year that were to be adjudicated during the course of this year. Um, that have basically been pulled and haven't happened. Um, um, in terms of the supply side on, on the property, um, what we're seeing is, is also that there are substantial pockets of land, especially in the Johannesburg area, uh, that, are, that are controlled by the various operators in, 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 in the industry. And that's not just the REITs. Obviously, you know, all the, all the major REITs have an industrial arm. So especially the larger ones, I mean, the, the growth points, the, the, the redefines, and obviously the fortresses, but over and above that, in, in our sector, we, we obviously have the likes of, uh, of the, the JT Rosses, the Improvons, the Atterbury's, the Ablands, um, that are all competing. Uh, the Zen Props as well in there. So, so what, what you're finding is that we're all competing for an ever smaller uh, new, new development play. And, and um, the, 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 the sector is, is obviously in, in high demand. Uh, investors want to have money exposed to the sector, and and as a consequence, um, you know it's it, it's it's almost a, a catch twenty two. It's probably the best time that uh, that that a CEO on on the supply on 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 the, on the supply chain side could be making a decision, because you'll probably get the best deal he probably would ever ever make. But at the same time, it, it takes a brave CEO to make a decision because these 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 buildings obviously come with massive amounts of technology in them and. and and what goes inside the building often sort of far outweighs what the cost of the building actually is. So, um, in terms of uh, the, the, the retail to industrial conversion, I, I think this is a, a, a much a much longer play, and, and will take a, a little bit longer before it, it comes online. Um, that said, um, it, I, I do think that that it, it is going to become an important part of anybody who wants to be relevant in the future. Um, and as consumers become more discerning, um, new ways will also need to be found in terms of how how to get product um, to rural areas, which I think are going to be immune from the, the logistics play for for much longer. Uh, but but also into into the township areas where you know uh, workers are people are out of work during the day uh, and and then and can't receive goods. And, and ways will need to be found in terms of how to fulfill all these things um, for people, which invariably some clever people will, 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 will come up with, with ingenious solutions. South Africans have an amazing capability of coming up with ingenious solutions, which often are unique to South Africa. Um, so the market looks, looks promising for us, but, but, um, but the supply side um, is, is obviously um, is going to be constrained for the foreseeable future until I think we get some some sustained GDP growth coming through to encourage people to to look to to take their businesses to the next level, and and Neil, I think that's me more or less done, um, and yeah, and obviously look forward to sort of the panel discussion and 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 also the the Q and A to see if there are any things that maybe I've I've overlooked and 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 we can maybe we can give more insightful um, answers to.
Great. So thank you, Andre. I think that was uh, great insights. And uh, I think it was quite enlightening to hear both your presentation and also Jason, because, um, you know, the picture that was mapped out uh, from a lot of Avon's data was not all that positive in it. And I, as I mentioned at the end, we've got to try and outperform the market and try to find ways. And it seems that both Jason and yourself have found that. But we look forward to engaging with you just a little bit later now, Andrea, on the Q&A and the panel discussions. Music